Brothers and sisters, it is really wonderful to be here. I'd like to thank Father Junar, our parish priest, for this wonderful invitation. Uh, I, I never thought that I would be able to just realize now to say a few things that I've been saying in my priestly life, especially on September 8th. I don't remember myself at all in my 46 years as a priest on this feast day that I mentioned Saint Anne. I bet many of you have not said it. Always, Ma Mary. But I think I would say I, I'm fortunate, or we are fortunate in Davao, not in Mati, not in Tago, and not in Digos, I'm sure not in Zamboanga, the oldest heresies. Wala sa parokya nga Saint Anne, Santa Ana, Davao lang. And therefore, when I received the invitation to come to say, celebrate Mass today here, I said, it is not just a function, I would say, it is a kind of liturgical logic that when we think of the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I would say the best place to celebrate that feast in Davao is not in the cathedral, though I said Mass there at noon. It is here. Because when you think of the birth of Mary, certainly, certainly, we think also of the one who gave birth to the mother of a Savior, St. Anne. What a wonderful place. <laughs> and it is all the more wonderful, like in San Pedro, the cathedral was filled this noon. And this evening also, I really, I'm a bit surprised that the church is filled. Well, older people like me, are expected to be here. That's not surprising. But I'm, I'm really touched. I'm very surprised by a lot of young people this evening. Yeah. If you've heard this, the Filipino Catholics, a Filipino nation, has been described as the Spanish old tag, El Pueblo Amante de Maria. A people in love with Mary. Many, many, many years, hundreds of years, centuries now, El Pueblo Amante de Maria. But tonight, and this noon at the cathedral, I'm assured that that tag, that kind of parang nickname, uh, special subtitle for Filipinos, uh, El Pueblo Amante de Maria. I'm quite assured that that will continue because of young people this evening. And I hope you young people, with a smile, do not argue, do not impose, do not feel superior, but just smile and remind your friend, maybe tomorrow and tonight, that I was in church. That I was, I, I remembered, Ma oh, Mary, this evening, and I remembered her mother, Santa Ana, and, and I feel good. I feel connected. I feel assured. I feel more strengthened, nourished in my faith. Young people, please tell your friends so that makadalaka one more friend next, next year, next time, and we will continue to keep the good news that our Blessed Mother brings us to Jesus. Adiesum per Mariam, to Jesus through Mary. Now, uh, this evening I'd like to share three things. I'd like to continue to share three things. Now that we know it's the birthday of the Blessed Mother, by the way, I had a student in 1990, 1991, school year 1990, 1991, at Remase. 
and his classmates in the class were, were laughing and he himself would laugh with them because they told me this guy has no birthday. What is the birthday? He didn't say birthday, but he himself would tell his classmates, Bye, di mana aku birthday? Ona, kai ayang mama sa bukid, wak mau ke Paris tu. So, pag Paris tu nak usah na reconstructed birth certificate. Hi mahu mau na sila ug date, unya ang date ingun siya. This guy seminarian said, nganong mama nak picha ingun siang? Nak kadum dum aku mama ngah ting sangge ubais. So nak pilih picha ting ubais yang ber puri tinuod. Well, we know that September 8 is not. The exact, we don't know when Mary was born. But that is not the issue. That is not the beauty of this feast. The beauty is behind this. The, the wonder, the joy, the profound peace, as the opening prayer will tell us, of knowing that God is there to guide us. To set us up, to help in our journey towards eternal happiness. Look, number one. Look, God is all powerful. We know that, but again and again, especially in the direct stories of the history of salvation, God never escaped. Never debated. He is the using, allowing the birth of a child to be part of the history of salvation, to be part of his action, giving birth. Like today, we remember the birth of Blessed Mother, and remember always it's good when it's September eight. Remember December eight. That this baby was born today, Mary. She was conceived without sin, December eight. That conception without sin, December eight, happened in the womb. Whose womb? Saint Anne. All this very human, natural condition again of giving birth. Perilous, peligro, but yet the wonder of giving forth life, as we remember today, the birth of Mary. I can be bashed because I'm not a mother. I am not giving birth, but I would dare also to say this: Is giving birth today? Today has that still the wonder, not only of a woman's right, but the wonder of God's life-giving grace. Is giving birth almost parallel to another item, the career of a woman? Just questions. But certainly, in the logic of the Christian faith, the birth of Mary, her conception, December eight, her mother, Saint Anne, December twenty-five, the birth of Jesus, mothers giving birth, is the wonder of God's action in our midst. That's the wonder of life. It's paramount that the problems, they, they are problems of the mouth to feed, the mouth to educate. But are we still holding in faith the birth of a child, the role of a mother, is beyond us. It is, in fact, as I said. An occasion, an event that God allows us to see His grace amongst us. That is why it is good for us on this 
first poet, on this birthday of Mary, remembering Saint Anne, to really sincerely give our appreciation and prayers for all parents, and especially mothers, and especially mothers to be, and especially the young ones who would later on get married, the ladies here. The grace, not duty, not obligation, not the burden, but does the wonder and grace of that gift of being able to give birth to life in this world. That is beyond us. Certainly, that is God's action amongst us. That's, that's what I think, what one good news for us as we celebrate. Happy birthday, Ma Mary. Our joy is also instanced by remembering Saint Anne who gave birth to the Blessed Virgin Mary. At the second reflection I would call is for today is to appreciate again or remember the human loneliness, the human smallness, which many of us or we don't take we take that lightly, but the first reading would tell us that it is in the recognition of our loneliness of our smallness, of our frailty. It is there that God works His wonders. On this birthday of Mount Mary, the first reading brings us from the prophet Micah to Bethlehem. We can connect now because Mary as a mother went to Bethlehem and she gave birth to Jesus in Bethlehem. But the reading tells us, the Lord says, You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. Ikan kawan si Bethlehem, si ka Bethlehem, ang ayang ka di ilista, samuk-samuk na gamay lang ka sa clan ba? Wak kay ayo. Too small to be in the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, this God speaking, for me, one who is to be the ruler of Israel. From your smallness, from your frailty, from your loneliness, who would start from there? That is not the, that is not the logic of today. Nobody would want to be small. Or nobody would accept to be small. That is a reason for much self-pity. But because, but the reading really today, remember, when we accept truly in humility our loneliness, no, even if we are rich and powerful, basically, we don't own our own selves. We don't charter our ways. Then God will act. This child born today of Anne, the child Mary, she was a nobody in Nazareth. We know that. She was not listed. She was not known. The lowly Mary of Nazareth. But she, be to her, God Almighty sent the angel Gabriel, Gabriel and told her of an immense news that in her womb will be conceived the Savior of mankind. From the unknown, frail, nobody Mary, God started the final stage of our salvation in the birth of Jesus. So therefore today, the good news is even the smallest among us, the most lowly among us, like the child that is born today, whose feast we are celebrating, God can work through us as lowly as we are. 
dita mag-start sa mga middle o mga sikat. Today we are told, Be open to the Lord even how unknown you are, even if you are not listed as kilala, sikat, through you, God, uh, through us, can, God can start miracles. The loneliness, our smallness, our frailty that we must recognize and therefore making us open to the grace and mighty works of God. Then another good news, I think that I get a bigger good news if I may say so, comes from the gospel. We heard the gospel reading read by Father Jasper, quite a long gospel reading. Usually we hear this near Christmas Day, huh? near the nine days novena, Misa de Galio, the Kaliwat, the heritage of Jesus. And you heard many homilies about that. But let me sum up here. It, from my own reading, the listahan of the Kaliwata Jesus is really a picture of us all. I, I don't think any one of us can claim a pure, clean, sikat, wonderful lineage. I can speak for myself in my kaliwat is intertwined Usanang sini sa cowboy ka na to, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, western, spaghetti western. One time when I was a new bishop, my uncle phoned me from Manila, phoned me Manila, and he was not phoning me before, but now I became quite important to him. He phoned me from Manila, he said, Undoy muloy, magbantay ka kay naapuno sa Mindanao ang atong ikagaw. Nga naman naman naman, mangingilad na ba na? Nga, bantay ka na kay maulaw sa apelido kay ato na ikagaw. Pero mangingilad na ako. Basik mo na yun mga parokyag ilad kay mayingon ikagaw ta. Ginoo ko na balaka ko kay I don't want my name, my family nga tarnished. But all of us, they live pure, they live pure. And in the Gospel reading today, we are shown that they live kita ikaulaw sa ginoon. And even in the impurity of our kaliwat, of humankind, of our community, of the church, saints and sinners, The grace of God will triumph and will work. In this list at the end, mga unknown put in the end, there's the unknown Joseph and the unknown Mary, not even the kings and famous names above, but in the end, there's the lowly Mary and Joseph and to them, the Savior was born. The good news today for us on this birthday of the Blessed Mother, we are mixed. Even in ourselves, we are mixed. Nay maayo, nay daotan. But in this celebration today, it makes us confident if we allow the grace of God to work something good, something of God will come out. From the Kaliwat sa Katawan, Mary was born. She was prepared by God and through her, the Savior, Jesus Christ, was given to us. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, indeed, wonderful good that we are known El Pueblo Amante de Maria. Mary, her mother, Satan, Saint Joseph, all the saints, 
they allow us, they move us, they inspire us to be confident in the midst of our sinfulness that in the end, the goodness and the graciousness, the mercy and compassion of God will triumph. Viva Maria! Viva Maria!